Hi everybody! Today I am going to show you how I make a flat rainbow cane. And this is a little more complex. So I have all my rainbow colors. And what I want to do first off, and this is a sped up video by the way because it took probably about an hour to do this whole cane um, real time. So I have this sped up about 35% uh, faster. Um, but what I have to do first off is there are certain colors like red and green in particular which will bleed um, if placed on and heated up fairly well on the surface of other colors. You know, some colors more than others. And so what I want to do is I want to get a really nice large gather of glass and I want to encase it in a very thin layer of clear just to make a protective coating on top of the red rod and then also the green rod um, to help them, uh, to help prevent them from bleeding out, especially when I do a white twisty cane. Um, which I will do later. And also if I'm going to be putting this on a white bead surface, um, I don't want all those colors to bleed together. And this was from a lot of experimentation I did um, with various colors because I had a request to do rainbow beads. And I tried to find a way to actually make a really nice rich colored rainbow. Um, without having it, you know, bleed out. You know, when you pull out any color stringer on, especially on a lighter color like white, um, it'll fade out, you know, especially transparent colors, but even opaque colors, they'll kind of fade because they get thinned out so much. And I didn't, I wanted it a nice rich rainbow color. And so after a lot of experimentation, this is uh, the best way I found uh, to do it, at least for me. So um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it too. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get a really thin coating of clear. And as you can see, when I start pushing down, I heat the end of my clear rod and I push down fairly hard onto the red mass there and try to make it really thin. So I want to fully cover it. I don't want any exposed areas. Uh, but I want a nice thin coating. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat all of this up. I'm going to roll it a little bit to try to smooth out the clear on the surface. Um, and that kind of evens out the clear before it all gets laid down. But what I want to do when I pull this out is I want to pull it out very slowly so that I have a nice thick rod that's about the same thickness as the rod I'm holding as the red rod I'm holding that's not encased um, because I am going to be using all these rods that are laying on my bench there in this um, rainbow cane and I want them all approximately the same thickness I mean of course they're not perfect even when you buy them from the manufacturers um, some are thinner than others um, but about the same and so what I'm doing is I'm pulling it out very slowly. And like I said, this is sped up. So I'm actually even pulling slower than this. But um, I just want to try to get it all even and a fairly thicker rod. And so it's about the thickness of a regular, you know, a seven millimeter rod or something like that. I'm just trying to even it out. I spot heated it to try to even out the section so it's, there wasn't any lumpy parts. And so there is now my encased rod. And I'm going to do the same with the green, which um, I probably don't have to show you that um, because uh, you already seen the red, but I do the same exact thing with the green. And now I have this purple, but it's too light. And um, pulling out purple will also make it almost disappear against the blue. Um, so I want to encase it with this really dark um, glycine purple. Um, some companies call it uh, dark violet. 
um, but it's an effetre color. So um, where I get it, it's called um, dark purple glycine. It's a really dark purple, it almost looks black unless you hold it up to the light. And so I want to coat this purple the same way I did the clear. Uh, you don't want any of the underlying purple exposed except for I'm putting on a thicker layer here because I want a nice rich purple because if this is pulled out really skinny which the final rainbow cane will be um, fairly each stripe will be fairly skinny and small um, you don't want it to disappear so I want a nice rich purple even when it's um, really thin and so I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to heat it all up and I'm going to pull it out into a a rod size thickness or as close as I can and so it's a very slow pull and um, so you don't pull it as fast as a stringer of course you pull it very slowly if you see that your um, stringer or your rod is um, getting too thin just stop pulling just stop pulling and hold it for a couple of seconds and then try to start pulling again and see if it's thicker for you um, so that's what I'm doing here same thing with the purple and then I'll be able to make this rainbow cane and the purpose of this rainbow cane when I was creating uh, the rainbow beads I had to make at the time a few years back um, I was putting a rainbow along the surface of a bead and um, I wanted it consistent because they, they were a set of beads and so I wanted every bead to look you know approximately similar and so I had to make a whole bunch of rainbow rainbow cane and this way you get a lot of cane for the amount of work you do with it but you do a, you get a lot of cane out of it and plus it's a thin cane so it's wide with the rainbow with the stripes of the rainbow but it's very thin and so you can lay it right down on an angle you kind of hold it on an angle as you lay it down on the bead and um, you can curve it you know or leave it straight or you know so you can make stripes or whatever you have you want with this but um, this is how I start making it um, I actually flatten out you know a little I put a Maria on the end of a white rod and I flatten that out and make it a little bit wider and I am going to attach the red rod which is the first color of the rainbow to this white rod make sure it's nicely fused and then I'm waiting a little bit for it to cool so it doesn't move and I'm just gonna cut it off the length I want for my rainbow cane um, you want it at least an inch long um, so you get a nice section of rainbow and now I'm gonna do the same thing with my orange I'm gonna butt this up against the red and um, I'm gonna attach it right next to the red on the white make sure that's nicely attached and I am going to heat the bottom side of the orange and the the bottom side the other side the inside of the red and I'm going to try to fuse those two together a little bit they're not perfectly fused but I want to just lay down the orange on top of the red so I go back and forth back and forth heating both colors on both insides of that attachment and so now I'm just straightening straightening it out making sure they're nicely fused before I start the next color they're not totally fused but they're um, pretty well attached and so now I'm going to do the yellow and so you do this you go along putting each color on in this line and it's just a full rod of glass going through heating both sides the orange side and the yellow side until they're nicely fused together I'm going to cut that off with the flame and then I'll straighten that out a little bit too straighten it sideways straighten it long ways flatten it at the end and so this is the way I do it and like I said this took me um, about an hour to do this and uh, this video is only 22 minutes long so um, so now I'm kind of off of the end of that white but that's okay I have three rods on there holding the rest of the mass so I'm okay to just go off the end there it's just a little longer on that side with the green 
and that's the encased green. And uh, what I found too when I was experimenting, just an FYI, so you could try this yourself, but uh, when I was experimenting with the red and the green, what I noticed if I just took a regular red that wasn't encased with clear, Oh, and I want to say this, I had this rod. It was such a beautiful color too. It just kept, look at that. It just kept exploding, exploding, exploding. So I had to stop the video and get a rod of dark aqua. And I wasn't happy with this dark, dark aqua. So um, what I do here, and if I knew I was going to use this, I would have done this before I laid that on this aqua. Um, before I started making this, but I would have encased this with, um, or this is dark, I'm sorry, this dark turquoise, I would encased it with transparent aqua to make a richer blue. But since I didn't know that other rod was going to explode on me, um, what I did was I laid down this turquoise first, and then I'm going to take a rod of transparent blue and encase around from the green, from right at the edge of the green around that turquoise to make a richer blue color, but just an FYI. Um, but back to my previous story, when I was experimenting with making these rainbows, I found that if I just had red and I just had green that wasn't encased with clear, when I pulled them out, the red bled so much into the orange that the orange just about disappeared. It kind of went, there was a little bit of yellow and then it looked red, um, you know? And so there was no, it didn't look like there was any orange in there, there at all, even if I made a thicker orange. And then also with the green, you were able to see some of the blue, but just barely. The green really overpowered and bled into the blue. And so it kind of just like looked like there was blue, maybe a little line of green, and that was it. And so that's the big reason why I was encasing these. Um, so it really made a difference because when this pulls out, it they're going to be really, it's going to be really skinny rainbows. Um, so you could put them on the surface of your beads. So just an FYI there. And so now I got the purple on. And the purple got kind of lumpy because my purple was a little too skinny and I was trying to push it on there a little bit when I was laying it down to make it thicker. So I'm trying to smooth out uh, those lumps in the purple to try to make it a little more evenly uh, across. And so that's what I'm trying to do there. But then after this is done, I'm going to take a clear rod and I am going to stripe on glass along that outer edge and you want to make sure you get every color that you cover the top of every color right from one to the very edge of the red to the very edge of the purple you want to get it all the way across you want to incorporate all those colors in there and totally melt in that clear and this allows, when you pull it out, this allows all the colors, all those stripes, to be pulled evenly at the same time and at the same rate. Um, so they'll all pull along. And so now I'm just adding some glass and I'm tapering it down into a little triangle and then attaching the rod. And so this is my pulling handle, is this clear rod right here. And so I'm just heating that rainbow a little bit. I'm switching my hands around because I'm left-handed. <laughs> so if you're right-handed, switch to your right hand. And I'm going to cut off this um, white. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the white. I didn't have another clear rod. You can use clear for the other side too. But I already had white there. And so I'm just going to use this white. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm co coating the white all the way across that edge from the very outside edge of the red to the very outside edge of the purple. So when I pull it, all of the colors will pull evenly at the same rate, if that makes sense. And this is the same kind of way you make marini. When you put your ends on the marini, you want to have your glass go all the way to the edge of your marini design 
so that it'll all pull out evenly and you won't pull out just the center of the color or anything. So I'm making a little triangle on the white too. And now I have both sides attached. And now um, you have to heat all this mass. So I'm going to heat it until it's all melded smooth. So I don't want any indents between any of the colors. There's a lot of indents and unevenness with these colors. So I want to heat them really well. And then I'm going to flatten them down on my uh, little marver there and and all sides and so you could see it's like flexible it's very flexible when I'm doing this but I'm doing like I'm focusing on one side at a time and I'm getting the parts that are li like there's a little more dimples in some parts than the others and you could see there's a, a lot of unevenness still so this does take a long time to melt together and uh, but it's starting to smooth out and so you just keep going until the whole thing's smooth. And you just want to be careful a little bit here um, when you're melting this because it is, um, this whole mass of glass does seem kind of thin um, on the whole of things, even though it's as thick as a rod. But you want to be careful that you don't start pulling it out and elongating it accidentally. You want to try to keep the glass all together in this uh, same size, same length mass until it's all nicely melted. And then you want to pull. So you want to heat almost the whole thing and pull it. But this, um, this glass, I think it's about two inches long or so, maybe a little more than that. Um, but you want about at least an inch and you could get a nice rainbow, you know, nice th uh, length of rainbow stringer from this. Um, but since this was so big, I actually pulled it out in two separate sections um, because I had uh, a lot of glass left and my la my arms weren't long enough to actually pull it out all the way. So I actually pulled it out in two separate sections, which you'll see here. But um, I'm still melting. You want to make sure I had a little um, dimple there. Um, I think it was um, between the purple and the blue. Um, that just wasn't going away. So I'm really trying to focus the heat there. But it's getting a lot smoother now. And I'm going to really start heating it soon. I'm focusing a little more on the ends um, because the center is a little thinner. And I'm going to start to pull it here pretty soon. So I'm getting it really hot on both ends, not really focusing on the edges just either flat side and then I'm gonna start to pull and so I'm just focusing some heat there on that clear mass and when I rotate it I'm rotating both hands so it stays flat you don't want to twist this at all and so see here I'm gonna pull this off because that section that fatter section on the end um, is not quite um, I don't my arms weren't long enough to actually <laughs> hold it and so now I got a big piece of rainbow cane right there sitting on the side. I tried to put it up there a little bit so you could see it. And now I'm going to just heat up this extra section and I'm just going to take my same clear part there and I'm just going to touch that because that's tapered at the end. It's already together. So all the glass should pull out together. So this fatter section, it's about um, three quarters of an inch thick or so there and then even thicker towards the other end um, and I'm going to pull it out and you can actually pull out sections some sections that are wider some sections that are thinner if you want different sizes um, so this is a great thing to do and also you don't have to do a rainbow you can do you know several you know a couple different colors um, you know like maybe you know green and purple, green and purple. And so you can make this multi-striped cane. It doesn't necessarily have to be a rainbow. And in this way, you can actually, if like say you have a barrel bead, you can roll um, or paint on these striped sections, either a rainbow or any other colors, along the bead, like wrap it around the bead. And then all of a sudden you're gonna have these little tiny stripes right next to each other and it's a really easy way to make even stripes 
So anyways, I'm going to show you how I use this rainbow cane. And this isn't the bead I made um, when I had to do the rainbows. It's a different one. But um, I'm just, I just have a disc here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the disc. You want to make sure the surface is heated. And I'm kind of laying it down on an angle until I go around. And I'm moving it around. So I'm kind of laying it and pulling it around in this curve shape. And now I have a little rainbow on my bead. How easy is that? And, and plus this is a thin rainbow stringer, so it melts in really easily, really quickly without too much distortion, which is what's great about it. So now I'm just putting on little dots of white uh, to represent a cloud. So I'm just making a bead that has a rainbow and a cloud on it. And so I'm just putting these little raised dots on it until I feel happy. I'm going to build it up a little bit more in the middle so the cloud has kind of a upward curve in the center of it. And so I'll just put as many dots or as few dots and, and I make them different sizes so it, it looks like a varied cloud. Some fatter dots, some skinnier dots. And so I just melt them in. And um, the cloud is an easy way to cover up the ends of that rainbow, which might not be so great. But there you go. And now you have a little cute rainbow bead. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.